All right, guys, let's talk about editing dialogue. So today I want to talk about some tools that we can use that we have within Pro Tools that are really helpful when we're trying to edit dialogue. So things like podcasts, audiobooks, stuff like that. And honestly, some of these tools come in handy a lot when we're doing other things too, right? When we're working on music or working on sound design. They're not strictly for editing dialogue, but I have found them to be very helpful when I've been editing dialogue. So I have this example session that I just opened up for my last video. If you didn't see it, it's about changing meter in Pro Tools. I'm going to actually remove my, my meter changes here and switch us back into maybe slip mode. I don't know. Anyway, I've imported some dialogue. So this is about 20 minutes worth of, I believe it's 20 minutes. Let me double check here. Yeah, so it's about 26 minutes worth of audiobook content that I've recorded with a client, and I'm going to use this as an example today. So first of all, when we're recording dialogue, right, a lot of times what will happen is we'll have the person repeat what they're saying multiple times, either because we want to repeat it because of a mistake or just to get better intonation or just to try a few different types of intonation. Uh, we do this for radio spots. We do this for audiobooks. We do this for podcasts. It's really common. And so what we end up having is we have a big, long session like this, and a lot of times I'll have a million markers in place with notes about where everything is. And then we'll go through, a lot of times I'll go through in shuffle mode from the back Back to the front so that my markers are always relevant as I delete things and I will just delete the bad takes essentially until we have something that's a little closer to what we want so I'm just going to kind of simulate that here so I'm just highlighting and deleting stuff and this is why I worked with the example session and not my actual session for this but we end up having a whole bunch of cuts and a bunch of different little tiny clips, right? And a lot of times they're a lot smaller than this. It depends on, you know, how the person's delivery is. And a lot of times we want to remove breaths or make the flow a little bit better. A lot of times with dialogue, we'll end up with a lot of really, really, really tiny clips. So then what you might want to do, the first thing I want to show you guys is do like a batch fade on these. So you can highlight everything and just do command F. And that'll open up this fade dialogue. And the other way to do it, you can hit cancel here. You can go edit, I believe, and then fades and then create. And that's the same thing as hitting command F. And so then we have a lot of choices here. So the basic idea is you want to try to pick options here that are going to be good for the bulk of the fades you're doing. So a lot of times I will make them very short in terms of milliseconds, especially if my cut points are very close to where the wanted dialogue is, right? So I might make this even shorter depending, uh, five milliseconds, 10 milliseconds. You can uh, click and drag these around to make the fade outs last a little longer and then be a bit more like exponential in their drop off. Is exponential? Is that the right word? Exponential for what it's doing? Anyway, um, you can drag it this way to make it a little quicker on the pickup with the fade ins on things. You can adjust your fade out, fade in shapes. There are a lot of things that we can control here. And I think I might have a video on fades that I'll link to so that I don't have to go into a ton of detail on those here. So if you're curious about that, you can go watch that video. Here, I just wanna tell you guys that you can do batch fades and create a whole bunch of fades at once. It can save you a ton of time. You still wanna go through and listen and make sure everything sounds good, but it can save you a ton of time. Still check your audio though. So once you're done selecting all your settings here, you just hit OK, and it's going to create fades for you. So if I zoom in here on one of my breakpoints, I now have a fade there, where previously it was just the breakpoint. So batch fades can be super helpful. So I'm going to switch back into slip mode here so I can use my trim tool to just trim this back out to its original glory, right? So now it's just the raw audio again. And the next thing that I want to show you guys, it's also really helpful for music, but we can use it with dialogue. I think people are talking about that a little bit less, but it's the idea that you can use strip silence to edit dialogue. So if I click and highlight my clip, right? So my all my raw audio here, you know, whether or not this has breakpoints doesn't really matter much. So I could just highlight both of these. Anyway, what you want to do is you want to highlight the whole clip that you want to process, that you want to affect, and then you can do Command U, and that'll open up the Strip Silence dialog here. You can also access this. Let me close it. You go to Edit, and then Strip Silence, and that'll open it up. It's the same thing as hitting Command U, right? 
or control if you're on Windows, right? Control and command. And let me zoom in a little bit so we can see some of the detail here a little bit better. But what you want to do is you want to first pick the strip threshold. So telling it at what point are we considering it silenced that we would either want to remove or separate it or whatever. So as you move the slider around, you'll notice it start to break things out based on what is qualifying as silence, right? So as I make this threshold higher in terms of the decibel value, right? It's gonna consider more and more things silence. So you get it where you want it. Let's say I want it right here, right? That's what I'm qualifying as silence right now. And then you can adjust these three parameters. These three parameters just basically help you to not accidentally take out stuff that you're gonna want, right? So you can have a minimum strip duration and that kind of helps you prevent uh, things like pops and clicks and really short noise things from counting as wanted noise, right? So you can make this longer or shorter based on what you want it to catch, right? If you want it to catch any little tiny bit of noise, then you can make this super short and it's going to separate things out into even smaller increments. But if not, it's kind of um, smoothing things over a bit, so to speak. So minimum strip duration. The other thing that you want to do is I always add a little bit of a start and end pad at the very least. And that's so it doesn't put the cut point uh, in the middle of a wanted audio, in the middle of like your transient when something's picking up, right? So otherwise it might cut off a little bit of what you actually want there. So this clip start and clip end pad, it's just taking a little bit of time and it's adding it in front of the noise. So if we look at something, let's see. I like this one. This is a good example. Let's see if we can kind of zoom in on that. So if I, if we look at the front here of this, there's going to be a separation here, right? If I boost up that start pad, it's giving it a bit more of a pad before the actual noise starts. Whereas if I have it right here, it's kind of starting partway through the transient here. So see how it's kind of, it's gonna cut off the very beginning of the sound and I might not want that. I might not mind, but I might not want that, right? So you always wanna have like, usually we have a bit of a start pad. It's not the worst thing if we forget to do it. I would probably redo it if you forget to do it because otherwise it's a lot of manual adjustments, right? But start pad, end pad, the end pad's the same idea, right? So if I move up the end pad and we look right here, we'll see it moving. That's all that is. So then we have a few options here. So we can extract, separate, or strip, right? So if we hit strip, what it's gonna do is it's gonna take all the stuff that's qualifying as silence. So like this part, this part, this part, all the stuff that it's saying is silence, it's going to uh, strip that out. It's gonna remove that from my timeline here. So I can hit strip, it's now removed that stuff. And now I'm more likely to have only the wanted signal, right? Only the, the human voice that I, that I recorded. The other thing you can do is just hit separate and it's just gonna put breakpoints into place wherever uh, these lines are here. So it just adds breakpoints. So now you have like separate clips here for each one. Let me highlight again. I did shift return. And then the other thing you can do, let me hit undo for that. And so the other thing you can do, it's kind of fun, but you can hit extract. And so what this does is it does the opposite of stripping the silence. It strips out the signal. So if I hit this, these signals, uh, chunks, is that the right word? Chunks, uh, so clips will be extracted. So now it's like just my silence. It's not gonna be all the steady constant silence. There are probably some little blips of like noise, like you can see some right here. Uh, but it's going to be everything that we declared silence with these parameters is now going to be there instead of the signal. So I'm just going to hit undo. So it might be obvious why we use strip, right? We can strip all the silence out and then we have wanted signal and then it's less stuff to weed through in theory, right? So that can be handy. That can be a time saver. Separate can help us not have to make as many breakpoints. Maybe then we can organize it from there. And just keep in mind, if we do strip stuff out, right, we can always zoom in and let's say we stripped out the beginning of something we wanted. We can always trim it out with our trimmer, right? We don't have to uh, leave it the way the system placed it, if that makes sense. We don't have to leave the edge of the clips exactly where the strip silence function left it. And you know, when we go through and listen to make sure everything worked smoothly, we might want to change a lot of those points, right? It just depends on what you're doing and, and how it sounds. It always depends on how it sounds.
So I think a lot of people would wonder what extract is for. I can think of things like weird sound designy type of things that would be fun to try with the extract function. In terms of a more practical example that I can think of for using extract is, for example, if you're trying to run noise reduction on this audio, right? And maybe whoever, let's say it's production audio for a film, maybe whoever did that forgot to do room tone. So you don't have a big chunk of room tone. And you do usually want a big chunk of room tone in order to give the computer a little more to work with when it's learning the noise profiles to then accurately remove the noise. So this might be something that you might want to try to be able to like cobble together a, a chunk of noise, right, for the computer to, to then look at. So that's one of the purposes that I can think of for extract. I think that's what I've used it for before too. So it's not totally useless, right? So yeah, that's the basic idea for strip silence. Let me close this out here. And my third tip here for editing dialogue, I kind of already mentioned here, but it's the idea of using shuffle mode. So what I'll do is I'll start at the end of my dialogue, whatever it is, right? A radio spot or an audio book. And I'll go through based on my notes and my markers and listening back to a lot of times I will just take the time to listen back. But, you know, it depends on how you want to do it. But I'll just go through and I'll find the bad takes, so to speak, and just delete them as I go. That looks like noise, actually. And I'll just go through and do that. And I start from the back because you'll notice with shuffle mode, as we delete stuff, it fills the gap, right? Shuffle mode is kind of like a magnet mode. So it kind of deletes that gap so you don't have a big open gap and it moves these forward in the timeline. So if I have a bunch of markers telling me where things are and I start at the beginning, what's going to happen is everything's going to move. And my, um, let me get a better example here. So let's say I start at the beginning everything behind it moves and now my markers are no longer accurate. So that's why I start at the end and go to the beginning. Oops. And I'll just delete those bad takes. And of course, you know, I'll, I'll be zoomed in and everything and listening and, and finding a good spot for it. And then you just go through and listen back and maybe use the trim function and stuff to, to make sure everything's flowing smoothly, everything's sounding nice. The other thing that I will do when I'm doing this kind of function is I will find this probably isn't a good example if we were to actually listen to it but i'll find an example of good silence so actual room tone from the recording right and i'll copy that so i just copied that usually it's about less than a second or something like that and then what i'll do is i'll delete things like breaths or things like bad takes and i'll just paste the silence between them and so then what happens is you know when someone finishes a sentence there's usually a bit of a pause before the next sentence so if i were to just straight up delete it it would not flow nicely right there would there would not be the pause and it would just be person constantly talking 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 without the sentence ever feeling like there's a breath or a moment so a lot of times we do want to then paste a little bit of silence in like this to make it just like flow a little smoother so that's what I'll do. I'll just go through and delete the bad takes and make everything flow nicely. So that's the idea of shuffle mode, deleting stuff, pasting in silence. I guess I don't have a really good name for that. That's kind of a long name, but okay. So let's say, let me do shift return to highlight to the beginning of the session. I'm gonna do command F to add batch fades, right? Like we did earlier. So let's say I have a bunch of fades on here and I'm like, oh man, I messed up my batch fades, but I don't want to, like I did that an hour ago and now it's too many layers of undo to undo it. And what do I do? I have all these fades that I want to now delete. So another thing that you can do is you can just delete your fades. So, you know, if you try to highlight everything and just hit delete, it's going to delete the audio and that's not what you want. You want to delete just the fades so you can do it again, right? So if you find yourself in a position where you have a bunch of fades that you want to delete, you just highlight that whole range of, of whatever audio it is, right? And then you just go to edit, fades, and delete, and it deletes all the fades for you. So that can be very helpful, especially if you're just figuring out how you want to do things and you went through this whole process, one of these whole processes, right, and decided you didn't like how it was done. So here the fades are gone. If I undo that delete, the fades are back. Zoom in so you can see. There it is, my little crossfade. So that's just the idea that you can delete a bunch of fades at once. And I think that's pretty helpful too for, for dialogue editing.
So yeah, that's about it for today. That's all I wanted to show you guys. I hope someone finds this helpful out there. Let me know what you think in the comments below. You know, as always, like, comment, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I'd appreciate all of that stuff. And I do have a Patreon. So it's patreon.com slash kdonoise. And my patrons get access to additional content. We have a Discord server that we're hanging out on. A lot of us are hanging out on. It's been a lot of fun. So I do encourage you to come hang out with us if you're feeling so inclined. Other than that, I come out with new videos every Wednesday, and thank you so much for watching. Okay. So the past couple of weeks here in San Diego, it's been so hot, like in the 90s, in the upper 80s, like really, really hot. And the past couple of days, it's stormed, and it's been cool and drizzly, and I love it so much. I'm so happy. So I got my sweater on. I'm ready for winter. My new place has a fireplace. I'm ready for it. I think I have to get it fixed, though touched up it's got like some cracks in it they were like it'll function but you should probably get it fixed up so i'm gonna do that definitely gonna do that i don't know if anyone has any tips for not bumping your headphone cable so much because i think i pull on this by accident all the time and i feel like it's gonna it's gonna start damaging this this side pretty quick that's one of the things that i like about these headphones though is this is like the type where you can easily replace it it's not built in to the whole thing you can disconnect it but I still don't want to have to replace it and I feel like I, I pull on this by accident all the time like I'll bump it and yank on it I don't know if anyone has any tips let me know <laughs>humming but sometimes whistling too where they can do two tones at once i think some people can do three right i don't know i wonder if they could do like a shepherd tone doing that i wonder if anyone's ever done that i'm gonna google that that's gotta be really hard though because you have to have how many tones do you need for a shepherd tone you need like a few not just two right you can't do it with just two all right that's what i'm gonna google now <laughs> i'm gonna be googling that now Okay. Okay, I'll talk to you guys later.